Now, a damning documentary by Al Jazeera has exposed a web of illegal gold smuggling in and out of Zimbabwe. Those that are seen to be leading organized crime include top government officials close to President MSM Nangangwa. Joining us now is Julian Rademeyer from the Global Initiative Transnational Organized Crimes. Julian, thank you um, for joining us on Newsfeed PM this afternoon. So this documentary by Al Jazeera has revealed, I suppose, the level of gold smuggling in Zimbabwe, linking it to even the country's ambassador. And I remember back in 2021, there was a report titled Illicit Gold Markets in East and Southern Africa that revealed an estimated 70% of the, of the country's output was found that it actually found its way into backstage international markets. So you were not surprised then by what was revealed in this documentary. No, Clement, thanks for having me on. Um, I, I don't think the, the revelations themselves are surprising, but what I think is extraordinary about the documentary is you get to go behind the scenes and be a fly on the wall and see some of these key figures, some of them quite notorious figures who've been involved in the gold industry for a very long time, um, you know, and, and speaking openly to these undercover reporters about how they go about laundering money, how they go mm. about uh, smuggling gold out of the country, um, you know, I think it gives you quite a shocking insight into the levels of duplicity and greed at play. And I, you know, I think for, for a lot of people watching this documentary, you know, may, um, you know, uh, residents of Zimbabwe, people have been looking at the, at the gold industry for many years. Mm. You, the, the scale of, of illegal gold trafficking out of Zimbabwe is not that surprising, but I think that, you know, there's the shock factor in, in seeing this play out and seeing the sort of machinations behind the scenes, the political mm. linkages play out. Um, and the contempt that some of these people have, you know, you have pastors and politicians and diplomats who, you know, clearly have nothing but contempt for the people who put mm. their faith in them, who put their trust in them. Yeah, because they probably also have protection from, right, the authorities who are higher up. What do we understand about these networks and, and how they operate from illegal mining to, to smuggling? Look, um, gold, I mean, gold mining and, and gold smuggling in Zimbabwe has been going on for a very long time. Uh, artisanal small-scale mining certainly came into its own around 2000 with the collapse of the economy. Um, gold today is Zimbabwe's biggest export, um, accounting for around $2.1 billion. Um, and they're very well-established networks, some of which grew out of the um, the, the disarray in the country that followed uh, in 2000 and the years that followed the collapse of the economy. Um, and, you know, as a result, you're seeing extensive amounts of gold that's being smuggled out the country. You've also seen the government try and crack down on that to also try and take advantage of gold production in the, company, uh, in the country, taxing it heavily, which has made black market gold transactions all the more attractive for, for uh, people trying to sell it. So how um, and, mm. you know, most... Yeah, sorry. So, sorry, continue the point. So, so most of the gold that is, is going out of, um, out of Zimbabwe, as we've shown, is gold that is being mm. uh, illegally smuggled out. And the primary destination for, for much of the gold from Zimbabwe, both legally exported and illegally exported, is Dubai. Wow. How much illegal gold then moves out of Zimbabwe? And what do the proceeds of these operations actually fund? It's, I mean, it's difficult to, to assess exactly how much um, is being lost. I mean, some estimates that Zimbabwe is losing 100 million U.S. dollars monthly in illegal gold smuggling. Uh, you know, in 2019, I think the country produced around 17.5 metric tons of gold. Uh, it's believed that at least 50 percent of the gold produced by Zimbabwe is lost through black market trade or mm. through smuggling. Why is this practice, uh, Julian, so problematic? What impact does it have on a country like Zimbabwe, which is already struggling economically? Well, exactly. That's it, is that, you know, there are certain elites, and you can see it from the documentary series, people who are well entrenched, politically well uh, connected, who are getting very rich off uh, laundering gold, of laundering cash for transnational networks. Many of them are politically connected. Some are actually... Uh, directly related to politicians or are politicians themselves. Mm. Um, and, you know, your average citizen doesn't see any benefit from that. Um, you know, the people who eke out a living on 
uh, small-scale artisanal mines across the country. And we're talking about more than a million people here supporting around three million dependents. Um, they don't see many of these benefits. So there's a small elite group of people getting very rich, laundering uh, money and, and banking that money in a variety of countries, including South Africa. Mm. So you, you've mentioned the countries that are among the biggest destinations of, of this Zimbabwean gold. And, and I'm just wondering about the official crossing point. Like, let's take the Bay Bridge border post. Is that also a hotspot for smuggled gold as well? You know, does, does that handle more contraband than all illegal crossing points into South Africa? Where the markets on, in Johannesburg are clearly the biggest recipients. Mm, absolutely. So South Africa for a very long time has been a, a key destination of gold coming overland from Zimbabwe. Um, it's believed, for instance, you know, gold being mined in Matabili land, at least 40% of that is being shipped into South Africa. That, that gold is then laundered through refineries, many of them situated around Gauteng, and shipped out again to the United Arab Emirates and in some cases also to, to countries in Asia. Um, other routes include Harare Airport, um, and those routes are particularly for your very well-connected gold smugglers, the kinds of people that are being profiled in this documentary, the networks that are being profiled there, who have the connections to be able to facilitate the regular movement of large quantities of gold uh, through the airport by courier, uh, sometimes twice a week, you know, a couple of times a month, and you see that too in the, in, in the documentary. Mm. And, and we also see the involvement of um, people who are very close to the politicians, um, their relatives. Do you think there's going to be action, Julian? I haven't seen um, any statement um, or a press conference by the Zimbabwean government so far? It has been already quiet. I see there have been some mutterings um, by uh, the Insurance Association about pushing for investigations. Um, I think that it's, you know, where we need to see action to some degree, whether the Zimbabwean government will take action given the, you know, the alleged involvement of the Zimbabwe Reserve Bank and other government entities in mm. these, these deals. Um, you know, time will tell if that happens, but I think that there can be international pressure brought. And I think, you know, the UAE and Dubai in particular have been flagged for a very long time as a hub for illegal smuggling. Mm. That pressure needs to be kept up. And certainly South Africa, there seems to be uh, questions raised about some of the more boutique banks that exist here that, that cater to the wealthy, um, you know, and their involvement in potentially laundering cash, not only in the gold industry, but previously as well we've seen with the illegal tobacco industry. Do you think that's also going to attract the attention of the Financial Action Task Force, which recently um, grey-listed us as South Africa? You would hope, uh, and I think, you know, I think that there are certain moves afoot within the South African government to try and address uh, some of the issues raised by grey listing, including mm. money laundering, was a big issue that was flagged by them. You know, one would hope that the Financial Intelligence Centre, working with other agencies in government, would be able to flag some of these transactions, that some of the, the transactions be queried by the South African Revenue Service, and that if money has been laundered through local banks, and financial institutions that they are held to account mm. for that. Yeah, and, and Julian, w when you look at the documentary, the diplomat who is mentioned in that investigation by Al Jazeera said he can actually use his status, right, as a diplomat to launder money, millions of mm. dollars through, um, you know, this smuggling scheme. So, so that diplomatic status is clearly being abused. Absolutely. Um, you know, and I think that, you know, it's not only him, but there are other diplomats too. I previously researched uh, diplomats from North Korea using their status uh, to smuggle out a variety of contraband goods. Um, it's something that can be easily abused by diplomats that have, you know, that the protections offered um, by the, the convention. Um, and, you know, there's very little that can actually be done about that other than stripping him of his, of his particular status. I think what's also interesting is he's not only involving, you know, if, if the allegations against him are true, he's not only abusing that status, but he's also abusing his status as a pastor uh, in, mm. in a church in Zimbabwe. And that's something that our research has been flagged as the role of charismatic pastors in the illegal gold trade in Zimbabwe. Are they using, you think, you know, this calling um, as like a cover-up? 
Well, in using in the sense that they, um, as in this case, you know, allegations that gold is being laundered and money is being laundered through mm. through churches, and that yeah. that money is then being concealed uh, within these churches. Um, right. So it's it's another form of of the laundering machine, as it were. Yeah, Julian Rademeyer, thank you for joining us for this conversation. He's from the Global Initiative.